All right, guys, this is just going to be a quick Kenwood MV7 update. As you can see here, got some freshly peeled Kenwood MV7s uh, as part of the process of uh, tearing these down to nothing and then building them back up into better speakers than they were to begin with. Uh, it's just part of the process, and they're just so banged up. Um, it all had to come off anyway. So as you can see, they don't look as bad once you get them peeled. But once we get a little closer here, I'm just freehanding it so I can move the camera around and everything. Uh, they're quite beat up, and instantly you can tell uh, this one uh, apparently got on the bottom, on the outside bottom. It doesn't show much of the liquid or stain, or water stain, whatever. It does on the inside, so I'm assuming, I'm going to guess these, uh, by what I found, we'll see later, these were used for party speakers, and somebody poured a beer or something in them, and they got all wet inside, because this one, everything that was in it was corroded really bad, so there's something got really wet in there. You can even see um, there's still some broken glass. I mean, I cleaned them out. There was a lot more crap in there. There was a whole bunch of broken glass inside of it, but, yeah, it definitely got wet on the inside. Try to move the other reason I did this so you guys could see around on the inside. See, there's the ports. Uh, one of them, anyway. There's the plastic pegs where the crossover is mounted. This is pretty common practice for mass-produced speakers when they cut out the hole in the front here. Instead of just throwing that piece away, they glue it to the back panel to kind of help, uh, I don't know, deaden that that uh, back panel. Um, <clears throat> even though these have a board uh, right here, um, these are still going to need a lot more bracing because they are such a large cabinet. They're going to need probably bracing front to back here, here, uh, probably have to run some braces here, um, braces on the bottom, another one over here. Yeah, it's going to need a lot of bracing. And the ports aren't mounted in this front baffle. They're mounted in this extra fascia, uh, fascia or other front baffle piece, which is fine. Um, they're like a lot of other speakers. Just It's just a heavy cardboard tube that leads up to a hole. And then also you can tell these are... Kenwood did their best to make these seem like look at like high-end speakers or whatever but when they use this low density chipboard like this that is a big sign of cheap i uh, see you can see it again there it's not even mdf i mean it's usable with lots of uh and this front baffle is only half inch thick as you can tell this is much thicker this is three quarter this is half uh, it would have been nice if just the whole front baffle and you know this is uh, three quarter but nice if the whole front baffle was three quarter but even though this is chipboard, hopefully with some sanding, uh, go over all the corners and everything again with the Gorilla Glue or liquid nail and put a bunch of bracing in it, sand them down. Uh, hopefully we can get these cabinets really sturdy. I can't say again because they were never super sturdy. Get them nice and sturdy and solid. They're probably going to weigh much more than they do now, which is a good thing. And yeah, and then the next piece... Uh, this is the well, this corner's not too bad. Um, we can see this one. You couldn't tell through the vinyl because it was really dark color. Somebody left a cigarette on top of this one at one point, it burned it a little bit. Um, oh, yeah, this is the bad one here. Yeah, this sucker got nailed on this edge, and this huge chunk is missing now. So, I have a couple ideas for some filler because, like, all the corners of this chipboard have become like that one's actually not that bad. Um, this one over here is worn down quite a bit more, but all the corners are worn down pretty bad. I have some uh, ideas for uh, composite or wood fillers that I can put on these corners and, you know, build them up, you know, fill this up and build it up and then sand it down smooth again. It's just I want to make sure I use something that's going to adhere and is going to harden really well. So after I sand it nice and smooth and put uh, paint them or put laminate over them, I haven't decided that it's going to stay there a long time because the regular wood putty um, would not work in this situation. Um, yeah, there's, see, there's another little chip. There's this, it, these are just very banged up. Uh, these speakers apparently have had a very hard life. Um, and just, I don't know. It's just kind of the way a lot of, the, a lot of these big speakers like this, this is kind of the scenarios they tend to end up in. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, I guess, it doesn't really matter. But these, uh, I guess these were lucky. They ran into me because we're going to save them and get them back to good and hopefully uh, get them to somebody that's going to take good care of them and really like them. 
So let me get the camera put on a tripod so we can move on to the other update. All right, I think I kind of got everything in shot as much as I can here. First, we're going to start by looking at all the stuff I found inside these big speakers. This is not even everything. This Most of the stuff was all in, I think, one speaker. This uh, old metal volume knob, it appears to be, was in the first uh, speaker I took apart and peeled in the other video. Uh, a lot of that stuff I tossed away. I found a Bell and a Hot Wheels car and uh, another one of these, I think, similar to this. Uh, that stuff I tossed it all away, but then the second speaker I took apart, I found so much more stuff. I'm like, I should probably just keep this because this is ridiculous how much crap is inside these speakers. So yeah, metal uh, volume knob. I don't know what this goes to, but if, if you have a stereo that has a volume knob that looks like this. Uh, well, okay, now it doesn't want to focus for whatever reason. Focus! It just wants to focus on everything else. Anyway, I'm not going to play that game. Uh, D battery. Um, wow, my camera's just like F you, man. Oh. Come on. There we go. Two, yeah. Yeah, good old Rayovac Maximum, all slimy and gross. Little kid's uh, cooking spatula. Some really old, uh, looks to be like lipstick. So, this is an, there, there we go. Thank you. So, yeah, it's empty, gross. Uh, what is it? Uh, Mocha 220. Penny from 2001. So, almost. And then a, a really corroded quarter. This quarter was in the speaker that was wet inside. You can see it corroded really bad. So, and then my favorite find, uh, Cindy Lauper, Lauper tape. So, and it still seems it's really dirty, but uh, it was fully uh, played through. Looks like it's at the end. As all the film is on the one side. You can see the pink... So if this gets damaged, I don't think it's such a big deal. So hopefully we can get this cleaned up and rewound, and maybe I'll play it in my uh, in uh, once I get my cassette deck working. So yeah, cool. A lot of junk. Get that crap out of the way. I think I mentioned the other one. Both the uh, compression tweeters uh, were toasted. Um, can't even test them. So and I already showed you the tweeters. I'll be replacing those. Uh, and I got the horns cleaned up, um, and they are aluminum, and my camera's not focusing again. Come on now. Um, but they are quite pitted and, uh, beat up. I thought, I was hoping a lot of it would just be, uh, uh, dirt and grime, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're scratched up. I mean, back here doesn't really matter, but on the front there, you can kind of see a lot of it's, they're pretty beat up. Um, so I'm... Um, I t completely took them apart, uh, removed the, the motor structure and diaphragm and everything, and because, get my light out here, before, down deep down in there, is just full of lint and, you know, just debris and all kinds of little crap. Like, when I took these apart, it was just nasty how much junk was in there. And I uh, took all that apart and clean, completely cleaned the diaphragms and everything and checked the leads. Everything's all good and they all work. They test out. Uh, so that's good. I'm just going to have to probably, yeah, so you can see how bad, how pitted this side is. Um, probably going to have to clean them up and probably try and repaint them matte black again. Because they are just, this one's not as bad. This one's the, this one's the worst one, but still. Uh, I'm just glad they work. These I actually think I can get new diaphragms for on Parts Express. I'm not 100% sure, but I think there are some pile diaphragms that might work in these. These, no, I looked everywhere I could online and nothing. Now moving on to the woofers. Actually, let's, now I got some parts coming here from Simply Speakers. Another website I use much like Parts Express. Again, not affiliated. I'm just going to gush over them because I've used them for years and they've always been good and they so nice when someone has the stuff you need. So, 
Pack slip out of there. Uh, instructions for dust cap. Okay. Oh, a card. Nice. With information, contact information. That's always great. I watched, whoop, bumped the camera. I've watched a lot of their videos. They seem like good guys. I've never spoke with them or anything, but I got new dust caps for these woofers here. I got four, one for each uh, woofer. These are, I believe, a two and a quarter. But basically, whoop, that fit right on there. We'll take an X Acto knife and cut this one out. I haven't replaced a dust cap in a long time, but. Yep, we'll take an X-Acto knife and cut at an angle and cut this one out. And uh, basically that one will glue right in place just like that and it'll look brand new. And then we'll slather it down with that uh, uh, shiny speaker goo and it should look new. So that's cool, we got the caps. What else did we get? All new gaskets. The on this one I've already started. The uh, gasket, paper gasket material that runs along around the outside is really beat up on all these. So i got all new gaskets material that's going to go, obviously, you know, around the outside. And that will, by the time we uh, put new dust caps on, and again, we're not focusing, uh, <laughs> put new dust caps on, are you serious? Come on. <laughs> uh, someone is in a mood tonight, apparently. Uh, new dust caps on, uh, new uh, gaskets glued on, and then we go over it with the uh, speaker coating. These should hopefully look almost like brand new 12 inch woofers. That's the goal there. So, and then the uh, last piece is the, these speakers did originally have grills. Um, but most of them are missing and odds of finding original grill for it is next to nothing. So I'm just going to have to make new ones. And obviously the female rubber grommet is still in the front of the speaker, but the male peg end is gone. So these are new. I, I mic'd out the other ones. These are the closest um, to what's already in there. These are plastic instead of rubber, which is fine. What is this thing's deal? But anyway, um, uh, yeah, that'll go in there, and then, as you can see, there's the plastic nubs I can put in the new grill that I come up with. So, hopefully, and I'm going to try to make the grills look pretty much like the originals. As um, far as the speakers finish, no, I'm not going to put real wood veneer on them because that's a bit pricey, and when these are done, um, it's hard to tell what they really be valued at being modified and stuff, so... Um, I don't want to dump a ton of money into them just to, you know, basically do all this work and not get anything out of it. If they're really good, I might just keep them because they are really cool speakers. They just, they need a little bit, a uh, little bit of magic. So that's kind of the update. Just kind of want to show you the stuff I got from Simply Speakers. Um, uh, the parts are coming. The pro the project is underway and, uh, oh, I almost forgot. I pulled out the uh, crossovers. They don't look like too bad of a crossover for a mass-produced, well, kind of mass. It's it's built in a mass-produced fashion, but in low-volume kind of speaker. Um, oh, geez, still can't see it. I kind of want to leave it laid out here so we can kind of see everything. And it's probably not going to focus too good. Let me move this over. And maybe zoom in a little bit. How about that? But, uh, yeah, there's the network. The upper portion here, this is for the woofer and tweeter, and then you have a set of wires going to a secondary board for SQ out, which a lot of times, like I said, mid-ranges were referred to as squawkers on older speakers. I don't really hear that too much anymore, but um, from what I can tell, this is a power relay so you don't blow up speakers. A... I believe these two, this is an uh, iron core inductor and cap for the woofer, and then you have a smaller bobbin inductor uh, resistor and cap for the tweeter. And the the, the horns here, uh, the mid horns are 7 ohm, or like 6.8 to 7 ohm. The woofers are 16 each, so as you can see you have two leads here 
uh, go into one on the woofer. So they're apparently, I'm assuming, wired in parallel to an 8-ohm load since each woofer is 16. The horns are 7. The tweeters, I don't know because the leads are burnt off on both of them. So I'm assuming maybe this was some sort of resistor in parallel or series to change the ohm load of the tweeters maybe. And then down here on the uh, squawker or mid horn, mid range board, another iron core inductor and a cap. So I'm guessing a, possibly a second order on the mid horn. And I'm guessing this uh, bank of resistors is a L pad to reduce the SPL or efficiency level of the mid horn because a lot of times horns are super efficient. And if the woofers are, say, you know, we'll say combined 90 dB, the tweeters are 90 dB, and these mid horns are 100 dB per one watt, etc., or something, uh, you can use a L pad to bring that back so the mid range isn't overpowering everything else. That's my guess. I'm not 100% sure. These are all Elna caps, which I think are good. I'm not super into the this end. I mean, I do build some crossovers, um, but, you know, uh, this is just from what I can tell, what I understand, what it looks like to be. But all in all, it looks like we have a second order on the mid tweeter and woofer, which is good. Um, I tested a couple of the caps. They seem fine. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll with these crossovers and redo everything, put these back in with the new tweeters and just see how they sound, maybe do a measurement with Rue and my Dayton mic and kind of just see what happens and go from there. If there's any huge issues that need to be panned out, we might just have to build all new crossovers. So that's it for now. That's the update. Uh, could be a while before another update comes because now it's kind of time to do some more, get some more work done on them. I'll have other videos, just maybe not necessarily on this for the time being. So thanks for watching, guys. And uh, yeah, if you want to kind of keep uh, track of what's going on with these speakers, uh, like and subscribe. All right, bye.